Is salt bad for you? What are the symptoms of low sodium? Are all of us getting too much sodium? I'm here to review the salt fix by Dr. James DiNicolantonio and sort out the answers to these and many other salt related questions. I'm Steve Goldring from simplehormones.com. I help healthcare providers with easy to understand patient education resources. If you've heard about the salt fix, but you're not sure if it's worth your time, I'm here to help. Stick around to the end of the video and I'll give you the bullet point takeaways. Three takeaways you can use whether you read the book or not. Click the subscribe button and the notify bell to get updates whenever I post a review of a new patient education resource. If you have an idea for a patient education resource that you think might be helpful, put a comment in the space below and maybe we'll check it out and review it later. Dr. James DiNicolantonio is a pharmacist like myself. He's also a cardiovascular researcher at St. Luke's Mid-America Heart Institute in Kansas City. The salt fix takes on the idea that all of us have too much salt in our diets. The conventional wisdom's really been cemented in our minds by decades of government-sponsored dietary guidelines. Eating too much salt puts Americans at risk for developing serious medical conditions like high blood pressure, heart disease, and stroke. Is it really true that eating too much salt puts all of us at risk? Do all of us need to prevent high blood pressure by reducing our salt intake? Does salt even cause high blood pressure? Do we need to reduce our sodium intake for high blood pressure? Do the benefits of low sodium diets really include less heart attacks, strokes, and even deaths? Are there any downsides to reducing our sodium intake? And what would the symptoms be of low sodium? Well, where did the idea that salt is bad come from in the first place? D. Nicolantonio contends that the idea salt causes high blood pressure is really based more in opinion than on scientific fact. The salt blood pressure hypothesis says that eating more salt leads to a desire for drinking more water, which raises blood volume. Higher salt in the blood leads to retention of that water to reduce the saltiness in the blood. And that retained water leads to higher blood pressure. Makes sense on the surface. The salt blood pressure hypothesis implies that hypertension or high blood pressure is a key metric for health. The speculation has been that if we could see a very small drop in blood pressure on average over the population, even one point, then we'd see a big drop in heart attacks, strokes, and deaths. Unfortunately, the evidence supporting the hypothesis was pretty weak and circumstantial. The idea starts in 1904 with a study of six patients. Conflicting studies come out over the next seven decades going back and forth. Some saying, yes, uh, higher salt intake does increase blood pressure, and others saying, no, higher salt intake only increases blood pressure temporarily. Other studies both support and debunk the idea that low salt diets decrease hypertension, both in individuals and over the population. Governments all hopped on the low salt bandwagon over the last 40 years through dietary guidelines. The CDC and the World Health Organization, organizations like the American Heart Association and the Mayo Clinic and the Cleveland Clinic, all these organizations believe that we need to be at 2,300 milligrams of sodium or less, preferably 1,500 milligrams a day in order to prevent hypertension, heart attack, stroke, and death. These recommendations are especially pointed if we're black, if we have diabetes, or existing hypertension or heart disease risk. Does salt actually cause high blood pressure? Well, the evidence points out that 80% of people without hypertension are not sensitive to the blood pressure increasing potential for salt. 75% of people with prehypertension are not salt sensitive and 55% of people with full-blown hypertension are not salt sensitive. The low salt guidelines are based on a guess that decreasing sodium in the population would decrease hypertension and cardiac results in the whole population. We presumed that blood pressure is affected by salt for everybody. We also presumed that overconsumption of salt results in heart attacks and strokes without any real evidence to confirm that. It's far from proven that reducing salt has an impact on hypertension for the masses, especially those that don't already have high blood pressure. 
low salt recommendations also completely ignore the possibility that reducing sodium could have some serious adverse consequences. Symptoms of low sodium include increased heart rate, increased insulin resistance, cravings for sugar, reduced energy, fatigue, reproductive deficiencies. Other signs of low sodium include reduced blood volume, iodine deficiency, hyponatremia or low sodium in the blood, which puts you at risk for cardiovascular events, for dizziness, for osteoporosis. Nursing home residents have a 43-fold increased risk for hyponatremia, being hospitalized for low sodium. And they're all on low sodium diets. Low sodium diets may actually increase the possibility of addictive behavior, especially when it comes to sugar addictions. D. Nicol Antonio makes a point that we've been focusing on the wrong white crystal as the villain for all these decades. Sugar has a lot of evidence behind it as a culprit in heart disease, diabetes, and multiple other long-term chronic health issues. The case against salt is very weak in comparison to sugar. Is salt good for you? The Salt Fix talks about how our bodies do a great job at regulating how much sodium is in your system. Most of us consume around 3,500 to 5,000 milligrams of sodium per day, and the body's pretty good at deciding when it needs more or less sodium and calling for more or less salt in your diet. The body's very good at holding onto sodium or releasing it through the kidneys when it needs to. He describes a salt thermostat that adjusts the level of salt that you need. Low carbohydrate diets, intensive exercise and sweating, pregnancy, infections, autism, inflammatory disease. The bottom line is to trust the built-in salt balancing system in your body rather than government dietary guidelines. The author recommends getting your insulin resistance tested by a healthcare provider having your medication evaluated by a physician or a pharmacist to determine which medications might be depleting your sodium and making it dangerously low. Replacing simple sugars with salt in order to decrease cravings, keeping your simple sugars below 20 grams a day, which goes in the face of some uh, diabetes recommendations of up to 200 grams of sugar per day. He also says to focus on whole foods and add salt to taste based on what your body wants. Would I recommend this book to healthcare providers? Yes. It's a simple premise that salt is really good for you and it's been unfairly demonized over the last century. But D. Nicol Antonio does a great job of explaining how and why that's happened. He also gives a clear picture of the harm low salt diets can cause and the benefits of adding salt back into our food. I wouldn't give this book a real strong recommendation for patients. I thought about uh, letting my dad know about it. He has hypertension and some cardiovascular risk issues, but I thought he might get a little lost in the technical and medical information and some of the numbers. So I, I might recommend it to some patients, but probably not all patients. Okay, so the three bullet points you can take away and use, whether you read the book or not, are these. Salt's been unfairly demonized as a cause of hypertension, which is far from scientifically proven. Low sodium diets, A, haven't been proven to reduce hypertension, heart attack, stroke, or death, especially in patients without existing hypertension, and B, cause multiple serious events. Those have been completely ignored. Number three, your body knows the right amount of sodium it needs. Trust your salt thermostat and give it what it's asking for. If you enjoyed this video, click the subscribe and like button and get notified anytime I post a new review. Check out other videos from Dr. James DiNicolantonio and his perspectives on low sodium and low carbohydrate eating. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk with you again soon.